Is going to osteopathic medical school worth it? One thing that we've learned from consulting with dozens and dozens of graduates from osteopathic medical schools is that the osteopathic cost tends to be a lot higher than the allopathic medical school cost. This makes sense because a lot of osteopathic schools are newer and people are not as excited to donate to these newer colleges as, say, the allopathic schools that have been around for forever that have these huge billionaire donors in some cases supporting them. Osteopathic schools tend to also be private compared to a lot of allopathic schools that are actually publicly supported. So osteopathic schools, since they tend to be privately funded with private institutions running them, then that means that these programs are going to cost more money. Also, it seems like a lot of the growth in the medical school enrollment side is coming in the osteopathic space. Since I've been born, the number of osteopathic doctors has tripled, which is really kind of amazing. And if you think about the just general anecdotal trends in the osteopathic medical school world versus the allopathic medical school world, consider what just happened with NYU Medical School. They shrunk the size of their class so they could give free tuition to all of the graduates. In contrast, you've got all these other programs, like some of these, even some cases, for-profit programs that are opening up, and they're trying to expand osteopathic medical schools as much as they can. You know, you have these this much higher tuition, and you have larger class sizes really doing a number on people, and a lot of the osteopathic grads we see have, you know, in excess of $400,000 in medical school debt in some cases. I'd say that the typical amount is three hundred dollars to 350000 and osteopathic schools tend to have a better track record of getting people into primary care specialties instead of your higher paying, you know, ortho, neuro uh, kind of specialties, urology that might, you know, have a lot higher incomes if you were to do a private practice path. Now, of course, with the residency programs merged in terms of the match, that means that if you're one of the top performing students in your class at an osteopathic school, you could still get a top placement, but it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult than if in you know the allopathic uh, side of things to get one of those top placements. So if you're going to graduate and you're going to have primary care type income as an attending, was it worth it to borrow 300000 or more of student loan debt? And the answer is actually yes. If you're looking at going to osteopathic medical school compared to just working in a corporate type job making fifty, sixty thousand a year. And the reason is because you can pay based on your income with any of these different repayment programs, ten percent of your income is the standard amount under pay as you earn or revised pay as you earn. And that's basically a tax. If you make hundred and fifty to hundred eighty thousand dollars as a primary care doctor and you're paying ten percent of your income, you're losing that to your student loan debt, and maybe let's say you're not eligible for public service loan forgiveness because you're in a private employer, and let's say that you do that for 20 years, well, if you're not doing public service loan forgiveness, then basically you just have to pay a portion of your wages to the government in exchange for paying for your, for your education, and if you are eligible for public service loan forgiveness, then you just have to do that for 10 years, and then it's forgiven tax-free. That basically means that your payments are a portion of your earnings, and your earnings as an attending physician are going to be pretty good because you'll you'll have provider status. You'll be a physician, right? What do you call somebody who went to osteopathic medical school and finished his residency? You call them a physician. So that's really good compared to some of these other fields that don't have provider status, that have doctorate degrees. People come out and they're only earning maybe sixty, seventy thousand dollars, and maybe in the case of chiropractors, fifty to sixty thousand dollars, which is really un, you know kind of unreal if you think about it. So compared to a lot of the other options that you have out there going to osteopathic medical school is definitely a good decision compared to a lot of choices. However, if you want to pay back your debt, the only way that you'll probably be able to do that easily is if you go into one of the top paying specialties out there and try to go the private practice route. Otherwise, you're going to need to be planning on having osteopathic medical school loans be forgiven under the traditional government repayment programs that are based on your income. If you have a lot of medical school debt from the osteopathic medical school experience, We'd love to help. We've helped a lot of physicians that are in a very similar case to what you're in. And if you have a lot of questions for us, I would, that would make sense. Just reach out to help at pseudoloanplanner.com. One of our CFP or CFA professionals will reach out to you and share how we might be able to help.